represents a happy day. Joy in my feet, joy in my hands, joy in every way. God took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ, I got the joy, joy, joy in my soul. Thank you for joining me today on A Woman's Joy. My name is Donette Douglas. I'll be your host for the next half hour. And here it is, brand new year, 2017. Can you believe that? I tell you, the time passed so quickly last year that um, I, some months, I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> they just really got past me, some of the months. I don't know. I'm, I think some of you will say the same thing. We live in a busy world, don't we? Amen. And I like to slow down a little bit and enjoy the days a little bit more. Amen. But on A Woman's Joy today, we are going to have one of our Bible trivia, Joy in the Word programs. Yes. Joy in the Word. You know, here on A Woman's Joy, I talk a lot about the Bible. And I encourage you to read the Bible every single day. Every single day. And you don't have to read chapters. You can read a verse or two. You know, I have little index cards, three by five. And as I'm reading a verse, and if it really ministers to me, I think, whoo, I'd like to memorize that. Or um, that, well, it just really spoke to me. You know, the Holy Spirit teaches us as we read the Word. And you say, I don't understand it. Well, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you from God's Word, okay? So I'll write those scriptures on that three by five card. Sometimes I leave it on my table where I read my Bible. Sometimes carry it around, you know, and, and through the day I can pull it out and read it again. Sometimes I have scripture taped up <laughs> around my computer. I've got scripture taped on my mirror that I want to start the day with God. And it gets me all focused. So the word of God, I'm telling you, if you want your life to change, you, first of all, ask Jesus into your heart to be your Lord and Savior. That's the first most important thing. And then get in the Word of God because it brings life to you. And you may not think anything is changing, but you keep reading it every single day. And before you know, your faith will be strengthened. Hope will arise in you. Joy will come into your life. All those blessings God has for you you will start realizing them through spending time in the Word of God. Amen. Well, let's go to our opening scripture for today. With our Bible trivia, we use this scripture from Jeremiah 15, 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them or consume them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart. For I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Thy words were found, and I did consume them. And thy word was what unto me? Joy. My Bible is a treasure to me. God will reveal. You know, I have read verses sometimes over and over, and maybe the hundred or the twentieth time you read it, God will just reveal to you what that word says. It's like a light bulb's turning on. I get so excited about the word of God. I like to get in the concordance, like uh, healing or pick out a word, anger, um, grace. Put those words in, uh, in your concordance. They will show you every scripture that has that word in it in the Bible. So you can look them up and you can research and uh, really study them. I like to do that. I like to find out word meanings. If you have a Bible dictionary, you want to be sure and find out the meanings as they are used in the different uh, verses in the Bible. But I got to reading the Bible, uh, Bible daily through our daily bread. When I was a teenager, someone subscribed to this for me. I still to this day do not know who it was. I thought maybe it was my parents, but it was not my parents. But this is what helped me to start reading the Bible every day because they have testimony stories in here. They have scripture and then they have the, the daily Bible reading for that day. And sometimes they'll have other verses you can look up 
And I started reading those, and boy, I got excited about the Bible. Because God, the Holy Spirit started teaching me and revealing me truths about God and His love and how to walk the Christian life and how not to be fearful and that we can have hope and be encouraged in Jesus Christ, how we have eternal life in heaven. And so many questions will be answered for you as you read, read and study the Word. So I encourage you. We have daily devotionals, our daily bread here in the studio, and we have the word for you today. And sometimes I read articles out of that for you on A Woman's Joy. And these will help you get in the word of God and have a hunger, a hunger to read it every single day. I, before we get started here, because I'm going to uh, use an article that was in the uh, November um, our Daily Bread. I wanted to share it with you because it says, Why Read the Bible? And I wanted to share a few Bible facts with you before we get started. There are 66 books in the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament has 39 books, of which 17 are historical, 5 are poetry, and 17 are prophetic books. In the New Testament, there are 27 books. Four are the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, 21 epistles, and the book of Revelation in it. Some Bible facts. The Bible contains 1,189 chapters. The Old Testament has 929 chapters. The New Testament has 260 chapters. The longest chapter in the Bible is Psalms 119. And the shortest is Psalms 117. The longest verse is Esther 8, 9. And the shortest verse is John 11, 35. The Bible was written over a 1,500 year span from 1400 B.C. to A.D. 100. Over 40 generations, over 40 authors from many walks of life, there were kings, there were peasants, there were philosophers, there were fishermen, there were poets, there were statesmen, there were scholars that wrote books for the Bible. It was written in different places, sometimes in the wilderness, <clears throat> in a dungeon or a palace, at different times, sometimes during war, sometimes during peace, in different moods, heights of joy, depths of despair, on three different continents, Asia, Africa, and Europe, and in three languages, Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek. And there are several other gospel facts here talking about uh, miracles Jesus performed. And so you can get a lot of interesting, really, you can get into a lot of interesting study here just from the Bible. Amen? So let's look up uh, first scripture for today will be, oh, wait a minute, first of all, I got ahead of myself a little bit. I want to read a little bit from this article first. Why read the Bible? The Bible has been given to us so that we may know its author and grow to love him, Jesus Christ. To get to know someone, we need to communicate with them. We need to talk with them and to listen to them. It's the same with our relationship with God. If we want to get to know him, we need to communicate with him. We can talk to him through prayer but how can we hear his voice? The way we can hear what God has to say is to read his message to us. The Bible, Paul, one of the writers, actually says it's God breathed. Think of it, the very breath of God is somehow infused in these words. But how do we know these words are really his? How do we know they can be trusted? And now I want to go to this scripture from 2 Timothy 3.16. And this is from the King James. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Thoroughly furnished, perfect, mature that we will be mature and um, we will glorify God, yeah, through those works. Amen. 
I also want to read this verse from the Message Bible, but I want to add verse 15 through 17. There's nothing like the written Word of God for showing you the way to salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Every part of Scripture is God-breathed and useful one way or another, showing us truth. Who doesn't want to know the truth? Hmm. Exposing our rebellion, correcting our mistakes, training us to live God's way. Through the Word, we are put together and shaped up for the task God has for us. And everyone is born with a purpose. We have a purpose for our life. And to know that, reading the Word of God helps us come to know that. Amen. So, <clears throat> Jesus himself believed in the Bible and referred to it often. He didn't quote the New Testament that hadn't even been written yet. He believed and quoted the Old Testament. So Jesus trusted the Bible, but there's plenty of evidence that supports the accuracy of the Bible too. Hundreds of archaeological sites have uncovered the exact locations of biblical events. Then there's the way the Bible lines up with other historical documents. Did you know you can trace the life of Jesus through historical documents through, without ever once going to the Bible? Four writers of different backgrounds and personalities Matthew was a tax collector. Mark was an investigative reporter. Luke was a doctor. And John, a fisherman. All wrote the same account, but from their own unique viewpoints. But isn't it boring and confusing? The Bible is an epic thriller. Think about that. And it is. That contains the all-time best love story. But some portions of it can seem boring when you get in the chronological order and all the names of the families, it's important to remember that the Bible is not just one book. It's many different books put together over the centuries. And not every book is to be read like a novel. Some are historical events written for study. Some even contain a census. Imagine curling up in bed at night to read a nice long census. Those sections are included in the Bible for very good reasons. But they are best read along with a book that it can, can explain the historical content. Content. Other books in the Bible contain first-hand descriptions of God's magnificence and His creativity. Some are insightful poetry. Others honestly explore doubt and other possible aspects of the human condition. Others still are full of wisdom and no-nonsense approaches on how to succeed in life. Finally, there are the prophetic books that point to what we can expect in the future. When combined, these books from the Creator of Life show us how to best understand life. God wants to use His Word in our lives, too. And that's where we're going to get into the Bible trivia for today. <clears throat> First, He wants to give us faith through the Word of God. Let's go to our first fill in the blank for today from Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. For by fill in the blank are you saved through fill in the blank, and that not of yourselves, it is the, and there's three words there, not of fill in the blank, least any man should boast. I'll give you a minute. You should know this scripture. If you've read any of the Bible, and know the salvation plan. Ephesians 2 is really great about telling you <clears throat> the salvation plan through faith. Amen? Okay, so let's fill in the blanks. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. Amen. <clears throat> Another verse that talks about giving us faith through the scriptures. Romans 10, 17. Now this one you should know. So then fill in the blank, cometh by, fill in the blank, and fill in the blank by the word of God. I'm going to give you just a minute here. And you've probably heard people quote this one a lot. This is a good one to memorize and share with people. Okay, let's fill in the blanks. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith 
cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So every time you hear the word of God, your faith is coming. It will build your faith. Also, what builds our faith is we read the word of God, know what it says, and to see the fruit from that. <laughs> God produces fruit. In our lives, sometimes we see it in other people's lives because what? They're standing on the word of God. They believe the word is true and what God said they believe will happen. Amen. Another verse about faith and uh, filling our blank comes from Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without fill in the blank, it is fill in the blank to please him. For he that cometh to God must fill in the blank that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently fill in the blank. And there's two words there at the end. Another very familiar scripture from Hebrews 11, they call the faith chapter. Okay. And if you got time, go in the Bible and read all of Hebrews 11. You will be blessed. Okay. Let's fill in the blanks then. But without faith, it is impossible. It is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It's impossible to please God without faith. Amen. So God uses his word in our lives to give us faith. The second thing is to encourage us. Many, many times I've picked up the Bible. I like to read the Psalms. David uh, was praising God uh, many, many, many times for being there with him and helping him through hard times. And there's, I just love to read the Psalms. And I've even had times I walk the floor and I read them out loud because I'm then hearing the word of God. There you go. My faith's being built, strengthened, and encouraged. Amen. So our first fill in the blank for encouraging us is Romans 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were fill in the blank aforetime were written for our fill in the blank, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have fill in the blank. Now this might not be as familiar of a scripture to you, but if you think about it for a minute, I think you can fill these blanks in. Okay, Romans 15, 4 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. We get hope through the word of God. And I know many times God has given me hope through the word of God. Amen. Our next fill in the blank comes from Deuteronomy 31 verse 6. Be fill in the blank and of a good courage. And there's two words there to fill in. Nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor fill in the blank thee. I love this verse. And many times I remind the enemy. You know, that's what Jesus used when the enemy took him up into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness of temptation. He used scripture. And I remind the enemy about this scripture. So let's fill it in. Deuteronomy 31.8 says, Be strong. And of a good courage, fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee. Do you hear that? He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So you are never alone. The Lord God is with you. So you don't need to fear. Because faith is trusting in God. Fear is the opposite. Fear is no God because you're trusting in yourself or things or someone else. Okay, there's no God in fear. But fear, faith, the opposite is all God. Amen. Amen. And also our last fill in blank for um, to encourage us comes from Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fill in the blank thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will fill in the blank thee. Yea, I will fill in the blank thee. Yea, I will fill in the blank thee. I love it. I will, he says, I will, I will. Thee with the right hand of my righteousness. 
This is another scripture I go to sometimes when I'm starting to get a little discouraged, and I'll pick this up and read it. So let's see what Isaiah 41.10 says. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I love that. I will, I will, I will. And God stands upon his promises. He is truth. He cannot lie. There's no darkness in him. There's no evil in him. So when he says, I will, he means that. So amen. So fear thou not. Amen. Be encouraged in the Lord from the word in God's word. Amen. It also equips us. And the scripture I have for that is 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. We had this earlier, but I want to read it from the NIV. Fill in the blank, Scripture is God breathed and is useful for, fill in the blank, rebuking, correcting, and fill in the blank in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly, fill in the blank, for every good work. This is another scripture you need to memorize. Write it on a three by five card. Keep it on your table or somewhere you can read it when you're studying the word. Okay, let's see what the answers are. All scripture is God breathed. It's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Wow, God did not leave us orphan. He doesn't leave us alone. In this word of God, he, you find the answer for everything in your life. Everything in your life right here. And like I said, you want your life to change? First of all, you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And second, you get in the word of God and you meditate on it and then put it into use into your life. Amen. And the next thing, it will guide us. It will guide us. Let's go to Psalms 119, 105. Thy, fill in the blank, is a lamp unto my, fill in the blank, and a fill in the blank unto my path. I almost said the words there because I've quoted this verse a few times. But uh, again, a very powerful scripture that you hear many times from Psalms 119, 105. And read it along with me, okay, as we fill in the blanks. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Wow. God will guide us. He will direct us. He will lead us. I love that. Amen. And then we have Psalms 32, verse 8. I will fill in the blank thee. And fill in the blank thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will fill in the blank thee with my eyes. And this answers are, I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with my eye. And there again he says, I will instruct thee. I will teach thee. I will guide thee. I love that when God says, I will. And sometimes the Bible says, I shall. And I know that's what will happen when I do what he is, uh, that verse says. I need to apply to my life. Then he will follow through and answer. Amen. The next step. Well, let's read about it real quick here. The next step. Jesus declared, and this is our verse, fill in. From John 6, 35. Familiar scripture. John 6, 35. And Jesus said unto them, I am the, and there's three words there, he that cometh to me shall never fill in the blank, and he that believeth on me shall never fill in the blank. I love this verse. Jesus spoke these words. John 6, 35. Again, let's read this together. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. 
powerful, powerful verse. Jesus says that human beings don't just live on physical food. He tells us that in the Bible. Let's go to Matthew 4, verse 4. But he answered and he said, It is, fill in the blank, man shall not fill in the blank by bread alone, but by, and there's two words there, that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I think you probably know this. You've heard this one many times. The answer for Matthew 4, 4 is, But he answered and he said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. So just as we feed our physical body, we need to feed our spiritual man. Amen. Our bodies would cry out if we did not feed them. How can we do any less for our souls? Yes, the world constantly demands our attention. But if we intentionally set aside time to regularly feed our soul by reading God's word, we will grow. For me, the best time to read is in the still of the morning while having a cup of coffee with God, and that's when it's best for me, because in the evening I get too sleepy. For other folks, it may be just before bed. I read slowly and ask the Holy Spirit to bring out truths. I've learned over the years that the only way I can know God is by taking the time to hear what He says through His Word. And as I get to know Him, I can't help but fall deeper and deeper and deeper in love with him. I want to challenge you in this coming year to get a daily devotional book that you read every day. And like I said, we have them here at the station. You can drop by and pick one up. Or if you want to give us a call, I'll put one in the mail to you. Get a Bible. If you do not have a Bible, again, call the number on the screen. I'll see that you get a Bible. But read the Word of God every day. Either start your day with God, or some of you like to read in the evening. You can read in the evening. Spend time in the Word of God, and also spend time just talking to God in prayer. And your relationship will grow stronger and stronger and stronger. And you know what? You will hunger and thirst to be with God. You will desire to be with God and in His Word more and more and more as you spend more time with Him. You will truly be blessed. Your faith will be strengthened. You will be encouraged. And you'll be ready for when that enemy throws them darts at you. You'll have the word of God to stand on. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Have joy in your heart today. Ask Jesus in, okay? One day I was walking in a world of sin. No rest for my weary soul. Then I met a man, said he'd be my friend. All my burdens he did roll. He took those worldly desires, gave me heavenly fire. Now I got a brand new goal. Since I met this man called Jesus Christ. Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Are healing miracles real? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of It's Supernatural. 